And, you know, we talked about early on in the class about if we could, you know, what, what do you need to fully characterize the far field stress? Right, because we're talking about SH max, SH min, SV, right? The principal stresses of the stress tensor. SV we can estimate or measure, right? Or you know we can estimate it from the over or overburden pressure, right? So we just need one of the two other ones. I'm sorry, yeah. And and well, we need the two. I'm sorry, we need the the two other ones and one of the directions because the three directions are orthogonal. And in this case, since we're talking about vertical wells, vertical is defined. I mean, the, our definition of vertical. I should have said this at the beginning, is that the well bore is parallel to the vertical stress, right? It's basically, the vertical stress runs right through the middle of the well bore. Right? So if we just know the direction of one or the other two, and then we can measure them, then we can fully characterize the stress tensor, right? Well, it turns out that breakouts are pretty good indicators of the directions. And so if we go back to the Kirsch equations, and you would also, if, if my figures were in color, it would have been pretty easy to tell, uh, and, and also from those plots, that the maximal stress in the field, you know, away from the wellbore, is, is actually right at the wellbore, okay? So the maximal stress, you know, stress decays as it goes away from the wellbore, as the one plot indicated. Okay. So as that normalized distance a, a over R was 1, as we go away from the wellbore, the stress decreases, right? So right at the wellbore is where it's maximal. So if we set A over R equal to 1, then we can simplify those equations. Right, they simple if A over R equals to one, they simplify to this. Okay. Well then now we have this cosine two theta. Theta is the distance around the well well bore, right? So this is obviously all right, so theta is gonna be minimal. So we're, what we want here is really the max and min values of the hoop stress. So theta will be minimal at 0 and 180. This cos cosine 2 theta is minimal at 0 and 180. Right? And so then the equation, the, hoop, the minimum hoop stress equation simplifies to this. Likewise, it's maximal at 90 and 270. And so the maximum hoop stress is this. So and then if you remember on our Mohr circle, we have basically sigma theta theta max here, sigma theta theta min here. And the other two are intermediate, so they're inside this guy. So really, this difference is what's going to, if we have an envelope that looks like that, it's, it's the difference in the hoop stress that's going to determine if we fail or not, so if it's out here. Okay. So our breakouts are going to be mainly dependent upon the difference in the maximum and minimum hoop stress. So if we subtract those two, then we get this. And so we see that the difference in the minimum and maximum hoop stress is basically proportional to the difference in principal stresses and therefore in correspondence with them. Right? So it's just basically a factor of four difference between the maximum and minimum hoop stress and the maximum and minimum principal stress differences. So where you see breakouts 
are clear indicators of the directions of the maximum minimum horizontal stress.